Okay, so this is following along with the following up on the uh, speeder uh, and the police officer problem from 99. Uh, but now they're just in motion and we're trying to understand something about them stopping uh, after the chase. So the speeder is uh, ahead of the police officer by some amount, 100 meters. Uh, and the speeder applies the brakes, so does the police officer, right? But it says, it tells us that um, that at a certain acceleration, they will collide. Um, so think about what this means, right? We have, uh, here's our speeder. And the speeder is moving along at some speed Vs. And it's going to go some distance uh, and come to a rest. All right, and this is speed V equals zero. And it had some acceleration uh, as it went that distance. And we could call, by the way, we should go ahead and choose a direction that's called this to the right, the positive direction, which means the accelerations are negative. And uh, it's gonna cover some distance, delta x speeder. And behind the speeder, we have our police car. And I'm drawing it down here on a different level. It's really right behind it, but I just am drawing it below to provide a little space so our drawing doesn't get too cluttered. And uh, I'll go with VM, VMAX, just to follow along with the same um, terminology from the previous problem, but we could call it VP, right? We don't really have to worry about the fact that it, uh, the police officer had those two different uh, intervals of motion. Uh, and the question is, would the, another way to have maybe phrase this question would be, Will they collide or not? Well, if they wouldn't collide, right, then it would also come to this same rest here. And it has, it has the same acceleration, but it's going to go delta x p. And these two cars are separated by some distance d, like this. They're, they're separated by that distance. And uh, the question is, uh, is the distance that the police car will slide coming to arrest? Will that is that how does that distance compare to basically the distance that the speeder goes plus the separation distance plus that initial separation here? So really, what we want to do is compare delta x p minus delta x of the speeder, the, the, the dis displacement of the police officer minus the displacement of the speeder. And we want to compare that to this distance D uh, that they were originally separated by. And if the difference in these two displacements is greater than D, then there will be a collision. And if it's less, then there wouldn't be a collision, right? Uh, so, I mean, it tells us that they do. So I'm going to go with greater than. It really could do either one. It's just a question of what, what we're comparing to. Um, now, we don't know times in this, but we do know uh, this question is about distances and speeds. So I would really look at this equation, v squared minus v initial squared equals 2a delta x. And we basically are gonna look at this equation twice. Uh, and in both of these examples, our final velocity is zero. We are trying to come to a rest here. And so that means delta x equals negative V naught squared over two A. And that negative is out in front, but remember this acceleration is also going to be a negative value. That acceleration is going to be to the left, uh, whereas we said to the right was positive. 
So um, then uh, we just have to sort of come up with some good labels here. So uh, we know that delta x of the speeder is going to be negative v. We don't. We could say initial speeder, but we v not s. But there's no other speed to worry about. So why don't we just call it v s squared and over two a? And that acceleration is the same acceleration for both vehicles, right? They both have that same six meters a second squared uh, deceleration parameter. So there's no need to separate it. We can just call it a and delta x of the police car, well, that's going to be negative v, we're going with vm squared over 2a. Um, and so basically, we're just trying to compare these things here. Uh, so how can we do that? most broadly well um we this is our this is our question here so let's just say um uh negative vm squared over 2a minus minus vs squared over 2a and we want is that greater than D. Um, and it's tempting to maybe want to make these make this a positive and a positive. And uh, actually, you could do that. Um, uh, but remember that this A is going to be negative uh, later on. Uh, so um, but uh, so what do we do here? Uh, now that you have that, right, we just want to show that this is true, okay, that this comes out to be um, that we what we get, we could we could maybe put it the other way around. We want to show that D is less than, uh, we could combine these all into 1 over 2A times uh, Vs squared minus V m squared. And uh, we could even uh, simplify that if we wanted to, perhaps by doing difference of perfect squares. Um, but that should be enough to hopefully get you on your way to showing this, right? And as long as this value here turns out to be uh, more than this value d, which is 100 meters, right? If this turns out to be more than 100 meters, it should work out. Now, um, one thing to keep in mind here, um, here we have speeds of kilometers per hour, and here we have an acceleration of meters per second squared. So we do need to convert something in this case. Um, and just a little hint of what can make this easier is uh, just sort of knowing that if you have um, uh, a kilometer per hour, right, we can convert that, right? It's um, 1,000 meters per 36 per, um, sorry, 1,000 meters per kilometer and one hour per 3,600 seconds, right? Kilometers cancel, hours cancel. We're left with meters per second. We can cancel 100 there. So that becomes 10 over 36. So one kilometer per hour equals 1036 meters per second, and 1036, that reduces to 5 eighteenths of a meter per second. So that's kind of a nice, that can be convenient to work with. 
right? We know that one kilometer per hour equals five eighteenths of a meter per second. So um, you can then uh, just just sort of use that to to convert, right? You multiply your kilometers per hour by five eighteenths, and that's going to convert it into um, meters per second. Uh, you could also just use a unit converter, and that would be uh, fine for homework, although obviously uh, you might need to have some conversion skills for the AP exam. Uh, so hopefully that gets you well on your way, shows that they collide. And then once you know that, once you've proven that they do collide, hopefully you can um, figure out the time at which they do actually collide. Um, uh, to figure out the time when they do collide here, all you have to do is, um, actually, I'll just go ahead and, and give a little hint for that too. Uh, so... Uh, for part B to figure out the times when they actually collide, right? Then we have to actually um, go ahead and uh, relate these two back together as an equality. So we would say delta X P equals delta X S plus that difference D. And then we use uh, the general delta X equals V naught T plus one half A T squared. So this is uh, the speed of the police officer times the time plus one half A T squared, where the, that's the negative six meters a second squared, where that's gonna be, uh, V of the speeder, right? We actually we were calling this V max, remember? So this is V of the speeder times time plus one half a t squared plus that distance d. All right. And from there, hopefully you see, by the way, it's pretty obvious these two cancel. And then you just have to solve for the time, right? And that's going to tell you the time at which they meet. Right, so um, this is uh, the, right. We're down, now we're looking at the actual distance that they really cover in a certain amount of time. Um, whereas here we were looking at uh, right in the first part we were looking at what is the distance they would go if they basically if they didn't collide if they if they didn't collide how far would they go and then we're trying to compare that amount to the separation distance, to, to the distance that they, that they have to go. Um, so here, then you can just, you can solve for T here um, and then discuss how the reaction time affects this problem. Um, uh, if you had more or less reaction time, how would that affect things, right? This, this prompt is basically saying, okay, the reaction time is zero seconds. So in reality, if there was, you know, a fraction of a second of a reaction time, um, how would that affect um, this problem? Would it, would there be no difference? Would they collide sooner? Would they collide later? Uh, would they collide harder? Would they collide softer? Um, things like that. So those are some things to think about. And uh, it's also interesting to think about, does it make a difference? Um, you know, is, is, it, does it, is it really substantially different in this case? Okay, so hopefully that's a good setup.